Hey folks, I want to give you guys a, a quick 101 on uh, kegs and kegging real quick. This video is going to focus over uh, or focus on the actual kegs themselves and uh, replacing the seals and maintenance and all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm just learning a lot of this stuff myself, so I may be a little off on terminology. But uh, my setup um, uses... Um, Pepsi kegs, or what's more commonly known as pin lock kegs. The, uh, there are two main types of uh, kegs that home brewers use. Um, the, uh, the pin lock and the ball lock. Uh, the ball lock is generally the most favored um, because, well, I'll, I'll show you why here in just a second. Um, it's just the, the universal favorite, but these um, kegs were given to me as a gift uh, out of somebody's garage that were it was they were all really old and nasty so I had to clean them up and you know they were free so this is what I'm using right now um, each keg holds five gallons I got two of them here at various parts and uh, and breakdown the kegs all have uh, a lid let me open this here there we go now the lids this piece here normally has a seal that goes around it. I pulled that off because the, the seal just degraded so much. But this is the main lid seal and it just goes right under that lip and over. You want to put some, uh, when you do that you always want to put some lubrication on the seals so uh, they won't stick and they'll be easier to get off. This is uh, um, sanitary petrol gel lubricant. It's really cheap. Um, doesn't affect the, the flavor or anything. Doesn't get into your beer. Um, so that's the first main seal, and it's really the most important seal, is to get that one uh, that goes in that spot replaced. Now, these are really, really old kegs, so normally you have a relief valve that's built in right there so that you can vent the keg um, if you need to put it under high pressure or uh, it just gets put under high pressure. Um, these kegs don't have that, so I have to use a, a different method to, to vent these. But that's the lid and what it looks like. And notice it slips in inside, and then you bring it up and it locks in place. And the reason they designed it that way and the reason it's set up that way is so that the, the more pressure you have inside the keg, the better the tighter that seal is because it's, it's pressing up uh, against the... Um, the uh, the rubber seal that should be in there um, and these just lock in place like that and you want to get one end out and then turn it and the other end comes up so the uh, oh, here's another this is the other design that came with um, for the lid that came with these kegs this does have a relief valve but it's a it's sort of an emergency relief valve inside it's designed so that um, if there's too much pressure inside the keg, it will automatically vent, which is not necessarily a good thing. You don't want it to explode, obviously, but um, these kegs can take an, an astronomical amount of pressure. Um, so, yeah, uh, this lid actually has one of those. I'm not too fond of that because if I'm doing forced carbonation, which I'm going to do a video on later, uh, it, that can be problematic. So... Uh, but that's what the other one looks. Other ones look like. Uh, I'm going to eventually get some newer kegs uh, when I need to, or trade these out or something. That'll have the the manual. There's usually a little plastic flag on this thing that'll let you uh, vent the the gas as needed. So those are the lids. And the other pieces you want to look at are these. These are called the posts. Now these are pin locks, and you can actually see the pins on here. There's one right there sticking out, and there's one right there, and there's one right on the other side. So that's the liquid side. It's got a dip tube in it. I'm not sure if you can see that. No, you can't, but I'll show you. You can kind of see that in there. There's a tube in there that goes all the way down to the almost the very bottom of the keg. <clears throat> so that's the, the liquid side. This is the gas side, and for a pin lock, these always have two pins. There's one right there. But the pin on this side is broken, so I'm going to have to get a wrench and actually get this off. These kegs were really, really old and nasty, so the, the threading on those just completely seized up. But when you get these posts off, 
And I'll, I'll have some uh, close-ups of the uh, posts that have already been removed that I'm going to show you guys in just a second. When you get those off, it basically looks like this. This is your liquid tube or your, your dip tube, whatever you want to call it, that fits right down in there on your liquid side. And notice it's got a seal right there. This is the original seal that came with it, and boy, is that sucker degraded. So that's one of the seals we have to put in there or that we have to replace. So, and you would just slide that seal off and then put some lube on a, a, a new seal. I would lube it up here. See, it's got that little flare out on the tube. i got to finish cleaning this one. I haven't completely cleaned it yet. It's got that little flare out right there. And that flare out basically sandwiches. There's the, the old seal right there. It basically sandwiches that flare or the the seal between that um, that neck right there. The, that's a threaded neck that actually holds the post on. So when you attach the post, that puts pressure on that seal and it maintains the the liquid seal uh, from the outside to the, the inside of the post. Now this side, uh, I'm actually missing it on. Uh, this side actually has a very short tube. It's about that long just enough to, to put a seal on and have it go in uh, but this is the gas side so there's no tube going down uh, normally the gas stays up here on top and the, the mechanics of how this work is you put gas in on the top of the keg and you've obviously got liquid in there uh, beer or soda or whatever and as the gas pushes down on the liquid the liquid goes in the bottom of the dip tube down there and comes up here and goes out to your uh, your faucet so that's the general mechanics however and I'm going to demonstrate this in a video if you you can switch the uh, the inputs and if you're carbonating something uh, you're, you're forced carbonating it you would actually want to hook uh, for best results you would want to hook the uh, the gas line up to the dip tube and force gas uh, into the um, into the liquid so that the, the gas comes out the bottom of the tube at the bottom and is forced to bubble up through the liquid. Uh, the more contact or agitation you have between the gas and the, um, the liquid when the liquid's really cold, the faster that CO2 is going to go into solution. Uh, but that's more of a uh, kind of an advanced trick, and I'm going to go over that in a completely separate video. But left side of these, if you're facing and these things are away from you, left side is the liquid and right side is the gas. So let's take a look over on my desk. Here's a close-up of that post, one of the posts, and this one has uh, broken off too. You can see that right there. Um, I've had two of these posts break on me so far because the, the threading in here is just, this one's actually not too bad, but the threading is just incredibly nasty. So, um, yeah, that's what the post looks like. You can actually, if you go to cornykeg.com, you can get replacement posts to switch these out from ball lock to pin lock. Um, so that's probably what I'll do eventually. Uh, but that's what the actual post looks like. And there's a part that fits in there that goes right there. That's why you notice that hole. That part, you can see it on this one. This is the liquid because it's got three pins. is right there. And if you press down on that little centerpiece, that's called a poppet. It's, you can't really see it in there. Well, you kind of can from the, the back of it. That's, this is what the, that looks like. This is called a poppet. And this, the bottom part, grips against the threads inside the post, and it's spring-loaded like a shock. So when this thing gets uh, pressed on by one of these little, uh, sorry, when this thing gets pressed on by one of these little guys, see it's got a, a pin in there? These are the connections. That pin presses down on this poppet, and creates a gap between the top of, uh, of this and the bottom. And that gap 
between the top of this and the bottom is actually what lets the, the whether it's the CO2 or the, the beer go one or the other. Uh, if you don't have the pressure from the pin on that connector, then the gas or the CO2 are, are sealed via this little seal on the poppet. And it actually takes quite a bit of force to press that down. Um, I don't think you replace the seal on these poppets. I think you actually replace the poppets. Um, so, yeah, to put one of these, uh, well, I should probably go over to take one out. Normally, to take one of these out, this one is kind of stuck. Uh, but to take one of these out, I would just take a pair of needle nose pliers and just gently press in a couple of times on that poppet. It, uh, it'll let loose of the, uh, the threads on the bottom of it. And then to put it back in, you just put it back in and kind of work with it and it'll get back into place. So these are the posts, the, the liquid and the gas. And here are the poppets that go in the posts. And to remove these, these posts for pin locks, you actually need a special ratchet uh, and socket set up. If you'll notice, this is a standard um, socket. But they have, uh, they, as in the people I ordered this from, uh, a machine shop, cut grooves that fit those pins. Well, the problem with that is if you get a really, really stuck post, those pins only take so much shear force before they just come right off. So, um, yeah, that's kind of problematic. Okay, these two are the corresponding connections. This is the uh, liquid connection. Um, I know it's liquid because it's coated, uh, or wait, no, this is the gas connection, sorry. I know it's the gas connection because it's got a light coating or a gray coating, and it's only got two pins to fit on the two posts for this sucker. Well, if there were two posts on that, but you get the idea. This one is the liquid connection that connects to the dip tube, and you can see this one actually has three connections. And this one has the little pin that pushes down on the post here. And uh, you get two choices when you order these. And I, I'm really opinionated when it comes to the two choices. You can either get a, a threaded connection like this. It's called, an, uh, I believe it's an MDF connection. Um, or you can get a barb connection. And the barb connection hooks directly up to the hose. But what you really want is that MDF connection. And here's an example on one I've got that... The barb is actually on the inside of the, the, the MDF, and that makes the connection with the hose. But this allows you to easily connect and disconnect these little hookups and swap them out, and that becomes immensely helpful uh, later, especially when you're, you're force carbonating your stuff. Now, this other little guy in the background is gas. I know he's gas because he's light. This is the other connection. This is a ball lock connection, and I have this because I have a little... Um, uh, two liter carbonator doohickey that I've shown you guys. Um, it's called a ball lock because it literally has locks uh, or it literally has balls on the inside and you pull those away or down to retract the balls. Pull this little collar down or well it's down now because it's upside down or you pull it up and that retracts those balls so you can put this on a ball lock post. Then you let go and the balls come out and lock this into place to give that good seal. And then this one on the inside has, you can't really, uh, you kind of can right there. There's that same little post that, um, or pin that pushes down on the poppets for this. So really the only difference uh, between the two is whether you're using pins to hold these connectors in place or whether you're using balls to put them in place. But the good thing about the ball locks is there's really no breakable parts. So I'm not, you don't, you're not going to have to replace those posts very easily. Um, for the ball locks, um, you can see on just, this is actually a pin lock post, but you can see these things are set up to take a wrench. So you can use a wrench to pull these off. Um, you just can't use a wrench on the pin locks because the pins are in the way. Um, so you, you're forced to use that socket. Um, so yeah, that's what this is all about. Um, okay, so that's your connectors, your posts, uh, poppets, and we went over uh, a couple of the seals. Um, uh, the other location on these posts to put a seal is right there. 
you want to put uh, a seal right in there and I'm gonna I actually have a, a seal kit replacement set up over here this large seal goes on the um, the lid for the keg and then these uh, one step smaller seals go around that lip one on each post and then these tiny seals the small ones go on the dip tube that I showed you uh, one on either side uh, underneath the posts so if you get those lubed and you get those replaced on your your kegs um, I think uh, I read somewhere that those kegs or these seals last two to three years under normal use uh, just make sure you lube them up really good so they don't stick and you're good to go you can get a two pack of kegs um, from uh, actually we don't have two packs of kegs you can get these kegs from our website on uh, byokeg.com or bringyourownkeg.com uh, either one of those addresses will work um, my next video is going to show you guys how to force carbonate one of these suckers um, so you can get your beer ready to go easy and fast